can we just take a moment to appreciate this like unreal color hey i'm sketches and scrubs thank you for tuning into this video i make weekly art tutorials paint alongs and vlog in this video i'm going to be reviewing the kurataki ganzai tambi japanese watercolor paint after watching this let me know in the comments what you think about this paint set whether you've used it before or whether you've used other japanese paints they are vibrant non-toxic and manufactured in japan they come in this beautiful green box and when you open the inside you can see a swatch card that they've included there as well as the big pans of watercolors something that is abundantly clear is how beautiful the paints are from the green packaging with the gold lettering all the way down to the bright and vibrant paint palettes each color is written in japanese and then has a corresponding number but when you look at the swatch card that's also written in english with the corresponding number and the corresponding japanese description this is incredibly necessary because the colors as they appear in the pans are not as they appear once they're actually painted and i'll show you what i mean a little later of course the numbers are also written on the back of the pan the kuritaki pans are a lot bigger than the standard half pans that you normally get and that's an example of a Windsor and Newton one but as you can see it's not filled all the way to the top so it may be that you're actually getting the same amount of paint or a little bit more I didn't want to paint on the back of the case um, for one thing it wasn't watercolor paper so instead I took a picture printed it out onto watercolor paper and that is where I'm doing my swatches at the moment so as you can see, although the colours are very vibrant, they are a lot more delicate in comparison to what it looks like when looking at the actual pans. So the colours that I've done so far, starting from the left and moving to the right, are red, then carmine, then rose madder, then rose madder deep, then the next line is cadmium red, then cadmium scarlet, cadmium orange which I'm doing at the moment and it's quite yellowy as you can see and then yellow ochre that's a little bit darker and richer. As I swatched the colours I thought it might be good to go through some of the pros and cons that I found with this set just so that you know what you're getting if you're planning on getting it. So of course I've already mentioned how beautiful the packaging is because it's green and it has gold lettering so I think it's wonderful if you want to gift it or you just want something different but I did find that because the case is so large it does take up quite a lot of space so I mean you do have the option of bringing up each individual palette if you know that you're not going to use all of them but if you are going to use an array of colors then you will need quite a large table space to use these to paint so I think the main drawback with that is that it's not the easiest set to use if you're planning on doing for example urban sketching or carrying it around and painting outdoors for that very reason Another little drawback of this set is that it doesn't come with its own palette. So if like me quite often you rely on the palettes that come with the set, especially if you're traveling on the go, then this would be a significant drawback because you'll have to use your own palette or carry a separate kind of sheet of palette paper. Although the paint amount may end up being slightly more or the same as the standard half pan, the fact that you get such a large surface area with these big pans also means that you can pick up a lot of paint in one go, which is great, but also use large paint brushes without worrying about contaminating the paintbrush with other colours, which is what tends to happen when you use the smaller pans. Can we just take a moment to appreciate this, like, unreal color that I don't feel like we normally get in sets and to stop and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thank you. Okay let's get back to it. So now that we've talked about the packaging and some of their pros and cons let's talk about the actual colors. These are traditional Japanese watercolor paints which means that they are made differently to the watercolor paints that we tend to get here in the west and that they have different forms of binders. What that translates to for us as painters is that they don't granulate as much as others and they're also described as being more pigmented. I think that stands true when looking at the blues and the purples and some of the greens. I think you can see at the moment looking at the page how those colours are just standing out from the page and how bright they are. When I compare it to the reds for example then I can see that actually they are not as bright and as vibrant as other colours or as I may get with other brands. The difference is abundantly clear when you look at wet versus dry and I think here you can see the importance of having a swatch card so that you can actually tell what colours are in the paint pans 
and I actually recommend instead of doing it on the actual case just getting some watercolor paper and doing it on there so that you can actually see how the colors will behave on the paper that you use. Here I'm going to be doing each flower in the same color just so that you can see how those colors behave so almost like a floral swatch if you like. Initially when I start the painting they are all very vibrant they all kind of somewhat match the color of the pans that they came from but as you see when they'll dry they do become very light and they fade they become more transparent. If you look online there's like big debates over people saying oh yes this is you know I thought this was going to be really good but it's not working properly etc etc and one school of thought is that it's not working properly but the other school of thought and the one that I think I have adopted is that they are working as they should but because it's a different art medium and it's from a different culture it works as it's meant to work. <laughs> For them so they are not meant to be as pigmented they're not meant to granulate as the paints that we get over here tend to granulate because a lot of the time the artwork from that region doesn't require that and doesn't want that so they are more delicate they are more understated and i find that is the case for everything apart from the blues and the purples and you'll see that already as the cadmium colors are starting to dry so the top row is starting to dry you'll see that they'll just get lighter and lighter and lighter personally i am not a fan of granulating paints so this is actually a pro for me but if that is an effect you're looking for then this would be a significant con for you so they are more transparent or translucent if you like and not as opaque now can you make them opaque if you want yes a hundred percent if you load more and more paint onto the paintbrush then eventually you can see that they do kind of still have that pop color and they do become almost semi opaque but the question is do you want to do that one and two i suspect that it actually uses up a lot of paint so if that's the effect that you want of course you can do it but just be mindful that you're going to be using a lot more paint and perhaps more paint than was intended so you may not get as much out of it as you want other benefits that I noticed from this pan is that they were quite nice and easy to layer and also easy to lift which just meant I could use it differently and I could get a lot more effects than I expected with this set. Looking at the blues as I've already mentioned and the purples as you'll see shortly they are incredibly vibrant and they remained vibrant irrespective of how much paint I was using. So that is the one thing that I would say contrast although the reds and the yellows and some of the greens were a bit more delicate and kind of faded a bit this set had some of the brightest blues that I have ever had and the brightest purples that I have ever come across so it was really really nice to use. Another thing that I have to mention is the fact that they come with three beautiful metallic colours so you can get a gold, a blush gold or a white gold and then it also has white paint. So I outlined and labelled the colours and then here you can see the majority of them and then I did another piece where you could see that if you want you can get bright and vibrant reds. There are 36 colours in this set and as you can see in this piece I just painted some of the ones that I would use most commonly. So those are the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the blues and the purples. Kudos if you've made it this far into the video, you're the real MVP. Now I'm going to be showing you some different pieces that I've painted with the Kurataki paints so that you can get a better idea of the colour range and how you can use them. So creating light blush colours is very easy as you can see in these two pieces. So whereas usually I would struggle to get these light kind of pastel colours with this set it was very very easy. Conversely these are the blues. So the two pieces on the left are Kuretake and the one on the right is Winsor & Newton. You can see which was brighter. Looking at these two pieces this one is Kuretake on the left and this is Winsor & Newton and you can see that the yellows and the pinks are just brighter on the Winsor & Newton than they are in the Kuretake set. And here is a flip through just to show you other examples of pieces that I painted using the Kuretake paint set. I do love this watercolour set, it's one of my go-tos when I am at home, especially if I know that I want to paint something really delicate. 
to recap on the pros and cons so the packaging is beautiful which is so nice to look at and i think nice to gift but on the other hand it is made out of cardboard which means that it could get easily damaged by either water or just if it's manhandled it does have really nice large pans which make it nice to paint with large paint brushes because you have a larger surface area but that also means that it's quite large in itself and it's just not very easy to use if you're painting on the go. To travel from one place to another then yeah it doesn't actually take that much space because it's kind of like an A4 size and maybe one and a half centimeters thick but if you're painting on the go then no it's not really going to work not only because of the size but also because of the fact that it doesn't come with a palette so you'd need a separate palette to paint with as well. It is affordable considering how many paints you're getting and how much of the paint and the wonderful range that you're getting as well as the good range of colors you do get very bright blues and bright purples but with the reds as I've demonstrated they do tend to kind of be a bit faded if you're happy with that that's fine if you want to change it you can by just using a lot more paint there are 36 colors included including three metallic colors which is great but I can't tell and I couldn't see any review that could tell whether these were actually light fast i.e whether they would stand the test of time if you were to leave them in the light and whether they would be appropriate to perhaps sell as like a professional piece although it does say it can be used by professional watercolorists for all these reasons i would rate the packaging a two out of five although i do like it i can see why people may have issues with it the portability a two out of five the price a four out of five the transparency a three out of five the vibrancy three out of five again because it depends on what color you're using and the color range of five out of five because it is amazing i've also done a review of my other go-to the winsor and newton cotman sets check out that video if you want to know more thank you so so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it all the best and see you next week